All right, Tyler, how you doing? Good, man. How's it going with you? Going well. Reporting uh, from Boston, Massachusetts. Nice uh, summer day. Yeah, it's not uh, not raining or nothing up there today. It's real chill. Yeah, pretty chill. Had a rainy summer, but uh, like you were saying the other day, any any amount of vitamin D that kind of comes comes out, it's good. Yeah, that's what that's yeah, it's what you want. That's what I've been finding. So um, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, it's a hot one over here today. I'm in Ohio right now, so I'm in Dayton, Ohio. Um, definitely hotter than yesterday, but you know, we're we're surviving. So how's the summer been going uh, overall? You just had a friend visit from Chicago and uh, how'd that go? Yeah, it was cool. Uh, my friend Peter, um, he actually, he runs a gallery up in Chicago called Hans Gallery. Um, I'm having a show with them in September, September 4th. So he came down just to, uh, just to like check out the work and see how everything was going. And he had never been to the studio and stuff. So yeah, it's cool to hang out with him. Cool to you know, just have people from in and out of town and go on a hike and they were, you know, he was psyched and got some good food and that's that. And um, we were chatting about how you also had a group show uh, back in Montana uh, earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For, uh, a couple of friends of mine, Matt and Tessa run a run a space out there called Bracket Creek Exhibitions. Um, it's a little bit outside of Bozeman, a little bit outside of Livingston out there up in the mountains. They have beautiful spaces. Um, they they do like a couple group shows every summer with a bunch of really amazing artists from all over. Um, usually in two or three different like locations for the shows and they really just let the artists kind of do what they want as far as installation stuff and yeah, really, really great people and really great little operation that I got going out there, Matt, they, they try to integrate the local people with it. So, you know, you invite like the OG rancher dudes and maybe people that kind of look at art as a different thing and something that they are not allowed to be a part of. And they try to bring those people in, which is, you know, really cool. So, yeah. No, it's super cool. How, how, how do you find that kind of, I don't want to say like educational dialogue, but like, there is a little bit of discovery happening there, I'm sure. For sure, yeah. I don't, I don't know if you really are taking it to the degree of like, let me teach you something. It's like, not like, let me show, it's just, you know, art is, art is like a weird thing. It's been romanticized as this uh, maybe walled garden of a thing in which, you know, you, you, there's been some pretty conceptual approaches to make an art. And I think that is what raises the ceiling on stuff and pushes society and people forward or maybe in whatever directions but um yeah so just kind of bringing those those walls down and just having the guy that just has lives a life of ranching and just kind of looks maybe at art as more like a technical thing like just loves like a good painting of a horse or a good painting of a scenery and just appreciating some weirdo rock sculpture you know just bringing it in and just 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 like opening up that line of communication and it's pretty cool, you know, and uh, the, the people that I've met through that, that are willing to cut it's, you know, and, I, and I think vice versa, cause you think their world is a bit of the same thing. So to like meet these people that are, that do something so completely different from you and learn from that and just, you know, just be, just both be humans and <laughs> learn yeah. from each other and stuff is, is a really cool thing. And to just like, take down the like the, the strange walledness of art like it's right. you know arts for everybody so no a thousand percent i i think that uh we all can um kind of experience those sorts of whether they're random or not those kind of intersections or collisions or discoveries whatever kind of little tagline you put on them but um listening to understand and not to respond i think that's something that we can all kind of live by little bit for sure yeah and if you know you don't you don't like it you don't like it i think that that's totally okay too if you're like ah, i don't i don't get it you know right. that's, that's awesome like you just you know so just understanding all of it i think is really cool and they, so they have a really great approach to like running a program out there and it's a beautiful place to me you can't ask for a more scenic beautiful place to hang out and make some art so no doubt really, really great um, okay so you're obviously um just like such a tremendous student, I think, of a lot of 
different kinds of histories, U.S. history being one of them. Um, you know, where does your family kind of, where does your family's roots kind of trace back to? Yeah, uh, kind of crazy, man. Um, yeah, I, I really started delving into that maybe a couple years ago. I've always kind of made art and then you just kind of get, you know, I just wanted to kind of make art that came from maybe a source that was, that I could maybe try to understand some things about myself or the world or whatever, you know? So I, I got pretty into like the ancestry or the genealogy of myself. And um, I started making these well paintings. They were like these blacked out tapestries that were pretty popular in the Midwest. And a lot of times they're very like domestic imagery of uh, like a, a stag and the mom deer, you know, the mother deer and the baby or, some little bears or raccoons, you know, and it's uh, a very domestic approach, like family thing. So I think that's probably why it was so popular Midwest and stuff growing up when I would see it. Um, and yeah, so I started making those, I started blacking those things out. A lot of my, my family came over uh, in like mid 1800s, like, you know, the thirties or whatever. And uh they were in Massachusetts for a while, then ended up over in like Northern Ohio, Wisconsin area in this place called the Great Black Swamp. And it was all the drainage from the Great Lakes before they started building the tributaries. And then that turned into, they moved a little bit farther south. They figured there was, there was a really big oil well um, in Lima, Ohio, or right outside Lima, Ohio. And uh, they all moved down there and they worked in the oil fields out there. It was like the biggest, I think one of the biggest oil deposits that had been found at the time, like in the, in the world. So pretty yeah. cool. And a lot of my, a lot of my extended family still works like in the refinery up there. They still like have it and everything. Um, so yeah, th those works started coming from like my own understanding of myself and where you come, where I come from. And I, I, I just, I think that, the amalgamate like the totality of everything is is just interesting and you very quickly you kind of reach the end of that which is which is also interesting like you think it goes forever and then you understand that uh you kind of get to the end of that and then it becomes like ether and you're like well what happened before that like what well, so so you know uh and i've always right. found that fascinating and and then you just under it then trying to maybe take a less selfish approach to it and understand that every single person ever has the same kind of thing, you know, like everybody has a series of events that have led them to the position that they're in and where they're, they're at right now. So understanding that that's not a, it's not just a you thing. That's like a, a we thing. And right. Every single person has that every, every left or right, for generations has led them to be right here. So I've always thought that stuff is really cool. And yeah, I, I think about it a lot. So, so yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, it, it, uh, it's one of those, one of those things you can, um, get real deep on, you know, deep thoughts of Jack Candy kind of style Saturday Night Live back in the day. But, uh, yeah. um, yeah, no, I mean, I, I think the genealogy, like you said, is, is, is always really interesting, particularly in this country. You know, I, I think that not a lot of people spend enough time sometimes kind of just saying, hey, like, we're all coming from someplace else. Like, I, you know, we all know that. For sure, yeah. You know, and, and I think it's really humbling and grounding when you kind of, like you said, just sort of back it out and, you know, then you are where you are. So, <clears throat> like, with regards to Dayton, Ohio, which is where you are, um, mm -hmm. and a place that I've always <clears throat> really been fascinated about because um, I know that Dayton has this like amazing art institute. Um, yeah. Someone that I uh, used to kind of hang with back in the day was from there and she was like, yeah, you know, uh, the art institute in Dayton. Da, da, da. And um, growing up, uh, you know, I'm really grateful that, that my mom always took the time to uh, sort of just take me to art museums because I it was probably like an easy way to just sort of entertain a kid yeah. in a way that was like relatively educational, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's awesome. That's amazing. Your mom did that for you. Oh yeah. No. And, and, yeah, and like yeah. I told you before, she, she's actually a, uh, a native to the state of Ohio from Cleveland, but oh, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Up North. Yeah. But uh, no, so like, you know, first of all, just in your eyes being a native, like what makes Dayton unique? 
Uh, man, that's, it's a interesting question. I mean, I think that there's so many beautiful and special things about not only the area, um, but Dayton itself. I mean, there's a lot of like, uh, the, the, the turn of the century, it was kind of the first Silicon Valley in a way. So there was a lot of inventions. It had some crazy patents per capita record for, I think until the Silicon Valley we think of today, you know, um, so a lot of like utilitarian things were invented here is, you know, the, obviously the, the airplane is probably the most well known with the Wright brothers and stuff. And then uh, like the pop tab and the cash register and there was, you know, Frigidaire was here for a long time. There's a big GM plant, a uh, lot of, you know, a lot of like blue collar factory stuff and it, it, a lot of bicycle stuff with the Wright brothers. So it, it has this, uh, this essence of maybe that, um, that like inventiveness is somewhere, somewhere in there. Um, so I think that that's a really beautiful thing. Um, it's, it's kind of centered, maybe it's like Northern centered to uh, like the, the mound builder culture that was, that was pretty prominent or, you know, 300 AD kind of area and then farther back than that. But uh, so yeah, there's a lot of like cool indigenous, like mound mound culture that's here which is pretty interesting and kind of kind of looked over when you're a kid which is which is also odd but uh yeah Dayton's a cool place man it really is it, it, it's beautiful and you just you, it's a really great place to understand yourself I think and uh figure that out no that's uh that's super cool I, I I can tell that it it's um become a big part of the I don't know I I don't want to get over my skis here, but it seems like it's very much a, a part of the process or input that you kind of, you know, put yourself towards with, with regards to your work. Um, yeah. And on that note, as you've grown older, you know, how is just your view, I guess, in relationship with your hometown, you know, and the rest of, I guess, the greater Americana shifted? Yeah. Uh, I mean, when, uh, you know, all that stuff, all the factories left and things. So growing up, it, it was cool. I, it, I, I feel fortunate that I was able to kind of grow up in like different, different areas. So, you know, I lived in the suburbs. I also lived, you know, stayed in like more rural areas and things at times. And uh, so just to be able to understand that and growing up skating and doing stuff like that, you, you go to weird places. I think you find that, you know, you find yourself going to areas maybe of the city or areas of where you, you are that, maybe aren't as well traveled so all these factories as a kid that were that were abandoned and stuff you know you find yourself just hanging out and going and skating the bank that's inside of an abandoned building and um i think that that was like a really cool thing to to understand as a kid and um and to see that and i think it's all it, it like set this tone for me of like understanding things that happened previously if i wanted to like dissect it maybe um, it almost is like a relic or some sort of antiquity thing by the time I got there, you know, these like big giant structures that have such a, such an echo of so many people in the blue collar aesthetic of just getting up, going to work, working in these, you know, giant garment factories or GM plants or any of these things that at one time just held so much power and so many people and so, so many families depended on that place. And by the time I'm you know, 14, 15, showing up there to ride my skateboard or whatever, it, uh, it's already, you know, abandoned. And it, 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 it has this, you know, maybe feel of some monolithic abandoned city that you would find in the Amazon or something, you know, so I think maybe that's where some stuff came from. And, but Dayton's cool, man, it, it really is. It's, it's, if anything, there's maybe like an insulation of thought that maybe holds some people back. I mean, there's, there's so many beautiful people and artists and stuff. And uh, yeah, just if there was one thing that I wish was a little bit easier was just people's just thought that you can do it, you know, like you, you really, you can be, you don't have to settle, you know, I, I feel very fortunate to understand that and that I was put in a place where I, I could like figure out what was the best way for me to like express myself and talk and make art, you know, so. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, and what you're making, I mean, when I, when I look at it, and, and I think that you've said something similar, you know, um, when I look at your art and your paintings, there's, there's definitely this kind of 
kind of ath certain athletic energy that, that, that it feels like is, is in them. Um, you know, they're in, in, in the same way that also like you would, you and I were talking about sports, like the way that an athlete would sort of aspire to sort of, uh, you know, outdo themselves in a sense, mm, keep yeah. pushing themselves development, developmentally. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, that's cool. That's a sick way to think about it. I haven't really thought about it. I usually kind of accredited a lot of it to just like the working maybe ethos of like what it is being here. I mean, that like work is a, is a pretty substantial like part of life here. You know, you, you got, you work, you like wake up and you fucking, you know, you work, you go to what you go to your job and you work, you know, which is so common for so many people, of course, in the world. And like, it's awesome, but the bar is set like, to to work and you you really put that work in um but as far as yeah as far as sports go um i think that is you know there is there is something there to unpack for sure like skating uh undoubtedly you know the treasure hunt of skating and understanding that and it is really cool and going to weird places and all that and um i grew up racing motocross from when i was uh you know, I started riding dirt bikes when I was two, like two and a half and kind of did it, did it, you know, it was like my thing. It was my first love for sure. Um, and so did it pretty seriously until I was in my early teens, probably like 14, 15. Um, it's kind of when I, it's, it stopped, but, uh, yeah, man. I mean, I think that that you can't help, but do something for that long and it not have residual effects on how you approach life and, what that is and racing I mean yeah dirt bikes and racing stuff is it's it's in me for sure I can't really can't get out of it yeah so like um how old were you when you when you really started to kind of dive more you know more deeply into just pursuing art you know as your passion art yeah I, I've always made art I guess if you want to call it that like I've always my mom my mom was always pretty uh pretty persistent in just like wanting me to be my own person and and really like push me to be an individual I guess like she she never she didn't shy away too much from uh if I wanted you know she obviously like wouldn't let me do anything too crazy but she just you know if you wanted to dye your hair or wear some goofy pants or like you know what I mean? like she just when I was a kid it was like yeah do your thing you know I, it was never you know, it's cool. You see some kids sometimes. We were at the, we went and got ice cream the other day uh, with a couple of friends, and there was a little girl there, and she was just had the, to me like just like the coolest. She was wearing like a floral dress with like tights with cats all over it and like a unicorn horn, and I was like, dude, this girl is this is awesome. You know, this girl like, and her parents are like, oh, that's her. You know, which is really cool and sweet. So, um, yeah, I, I think that 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 helped a lot in making art. So. So yeah, I've kind of always made stuff or made drawings or made paintings and I'm, you know, she was like, be creative and like be whatever. And so I, I, honestly, I don't think I really thought of it as a thing that you could make a living living at, like, you know, cause it's so romanticized to be the starving artist. Like that's, that's all you ever, you know, that's what, what, you know, I mean, maybe now it's a little different now it's you're either starving or you're Jeff Koons. Like it's, there's no in between. It's like, you have no money or you're super wealthy. So, um, but there is an in between and you like can make, you know, you can't be just like a regular human and make art for a living. And so, I don't know, I guess to answer the question, maybe like 20, 25, 26, 31 now, 30 now, 31 now. So, uh, yeah, kind of late in life, honestly, that did, did I see like, oh, okay, this is like viable, like I could do this. Not to say that I've done it in any way, but that, that you know it's possible. No, I mean, I, I think it goes without saying that you are, you know, in the swing of doing it. And, and, you know, something that you said when we chatted prior, that was just super inspirational and really, really real. You know, you were, you were talking about how um, that you kind of, had to develop a certain level of understanding as to how to lose. And, oh, yeah. and, and that's something that maybe it's from sports, or maybe it's just from growing up, you know, no matter what, like, but, you know, learning how to lose, learn, learning to remove your ego from things. You know, you, you talk about Alan Watts and whatnot, but. Yeah. Yeah. I think, 
Yeah, growing up, I mean, I guess to talk about the racing thing again, growing up like racing dirt bikes, I mean, you you really got to learn to lose. Like I was never the, the best dude out there, but I was, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I wasn't the worst dude out there either. So it's it, every weekend, every, you know, anytime you, you got to figure out how to lose. And like, when you're doing that high intensity stuff, like you're really putting yourself out there and you, you know, you want to win. Like you, you know, you're lined up on a gate with 40 other dudes and yeah, you want to win. And a lot of times you're, you're not going to. So under to just learn how to lose, but also to like, keep, the keep like the keep the fire lit inside of you while still losing you know what like while under like you it's easy to keep going when you just keep if you win every time like it, you just you, why would you stop like you're just winning you know so uh to to lose and to and to like still have that sincerity and that's that love for what you're doing even though maybe you don't come out on top every time and to like understand that there's there's a bigger purpose to it and just to keep going, you know, and I think that that, for me, at least that in my life, that has been also with art, not, not maybe the actual art world, but just in making art and like mm -hmm. understanding the journey of it and understanding like, you got to do this to get to that. And you just got to, you know, I don't know, a lot of times making art is, it's, it's hard, man. <laughs> like it's, and I don't know if people talk about that, but like it's, it's hard. I mean, at least for me, I don't know, you know, it, it's a lot of times it's pretty, emo it's, it's psychologically emotional. You leave the studio some days, it's the best day ever. And some days you leave and you're like, what am I doing? Like, this is insane, <laughs> you know? So, but you got to come back the next day and just keep chipping away at it. And, and you know, something comes out of that. Yeah. And, and, and talk about, you know, obviously you've, you've done a lot of things, right? You've done a lot of things with your art career that, you know, I would argue that most people, you know, probably just dream about. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you've developed um, something that is your own. You know, I mean, I, when I look at what you do, um, I, I, I really honestly, one of the first things that I think of is like, where does he start first with this? Or where did the first, where did the genesis of that, you know, mm. creation begin? You know, what yeah. corner of it? Because the whole thing is, is, is a world unto itself. And, 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 and I want to talk about that because you are, um, you talk about how you're fascinated about the idea of worlds within worlds. Mm. Yeah. And I think that anybody that spends time studying the world you've created for yourself I mean, mm -hmm. it, it really is a, a very remarkable footprint. It's almost like like you're saying about the the show in Montana. Like you, you can't help but almost feel like everybody, whether they're um, up on you know something in the in the art space or not, everybody's kind of stepping into your world for the first time. Yeah, I I try to uh, yeah, you, you, I I try to approach art and not make it kind of like the the Montana thing too. I never I never want to make it seem like it's over people's heads or big headed or like any of the you know pompous in any way and and uh just approachable you know so I, I want people to just maybe enjoy looking at stuff and then if you want to under maybe try to talk about you know it then then we can of course and like you make rules as an artist and give yourself purpose and all that stuff and I don't think many artists just make work in a vacuum like it you know it comes from something obviously and uh yeah, I, I have a tendency to maybe approach things uh, like you would with like a telescoping lens or something. So mm -hmm. I, I like looking at stuff really close up to like for like an instantaneous little moment or something. But then if you zoom that all the way out to what you said, like the genesis of something, then you can also do that too within a work. You know, you can go to the most minute, subtle detail, but you can also zoom it all the way out to just the, the the genesis of totality and like everything that's ever come together and uh I was actually thinking the other day when people list like things that it, you know you you list an artwork and you put the title and the dimensions and the date and then you put you know what it took to the the ingredients or whatever to like make a painting and uh I don't know I thought it'd be cool to like list it as everything because <laughs> it's kind of like I don't know I it seemed cool at the time when I say it out loud it sounds a little corny but 
uh but it you know i don't know like because it kind of is tr true to a certain degree um i yeah you just try to take yourself out of it as much you can at this point at least i do i, I don't yeah i don't yeah yeah i'm just kind of a a conduit maybe for something to go through like i don't really want it to be about me i just want right. it to be about just just so you know i don't know consciousness or something so yeah, no, I mean, and clearly the painting is as the output of, yeah. I guess, you in that moment um, right. is, is, is pretty undeniable and you're yeah. self-taught, really. Yeah. I guess I didn't really answer your question, like where it starts. Uh, <laughs> but, well, it's, 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 it's an impossible one. Maybe that's, maybe it's not impossible to answer, but. Uh, I mean, from a like, technical you, standpoint, I guess I would say that I usually, I will have, I will maybe see a shape and it will be kind of anywhere like I, I started this painting the other day from the shape of like the motel eight sign that i saw driving down the road and i was like oh that's a cool shape so i took a photo on my phone and then got to the studio and kind of traced it out in one way or another and like made it made a shaped panel that was the shape of that sign and it uh i just liked how it looked and then so then that just goes from there and then uh you kind of a friend of mine was in the studio one time and kind of accredited the way that I maybe lay out paintings to how you would lay out your clothes like the beginning like the first day of school or something you kind of you got your like sick fit that you're gonna wear the first day like oh I'm wearing these pants with this shirt with these shoes so I kind of do that with paintings uh where there's just a lot of little stacks of maybe objects or tapestries or prints or little weird things that I find that I think kind of talk to each other in a way and I kind of just lay them together and they maybe sit in piles for a week or a year, you know, so and then just build on that and you just maybe you just listen to what the work is doing and just kind of help guide it into existence, I guess, in a way. Hmm. Yeah. And and I mean, as part of that guiding process, there's a lot of stuff you're doing that, you know, isn't exactly uh, a skill that you're going to go to necessarily like art school for or whatever. I mean, like you're talking about sewing and carpentry and like a, probably a fair amount of woodworking in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I never went to school or anything for art. Um, I, I think I, you know, I've been lucky enough to have people around me that know more than I do in one way or another. And I, um, so that, that's been a really you know positive great thing and, and as far as you know people that understand how to really run a tool or you know whether that's working like some labor you know construction job or something you know just doing demo or whatever you just kind of if you if you take a you know you take a jigsaw and you understand how it works from a maybe you read the manual kind of way you understand that and then you're able to manipulate maybe the way that it's supposed to be used so you as long as you come kind of understand the proper way to do it you can then make you know change it or whatever or make it your own you know in, in like a safe way or something i guess uh but yeah you know you can I, I think people can figure a lot of stuff out you know i i don't there's a lot of stuff i don't know how to do that i would love to figure out how to do and hopefully that just continues to unfold and you just learn more and be around people that know more than you about certain things I think is awesome so for example like the the piece over your shoulder right now um yeah. what what's the name of that uh man I don't I don't know it's actually it's for a show at that Chicago gallery I was telling you about um that is going yeah September 4th so that'll be in that show um it's uh it's almost done it, there's like this weird thing that happens I feel like with work um where it, it it like comes into itself I guess for lack of a better term where it, it it sits around and you work on it and you laboriously kind of touch it and do your thing for you know hours and hours and hours and uh and then one day just the sky opens up and all those objects now are one object and Maybe you call that a painting or a sculpture or whatever you call it, but it goes from being a lot of things to one thing. And uh, this thing, I guess you get better at like understanding maybe the language that you set up for yourself for like the fences or whatever. So um, yeah, this thing, 
It's getting close. I, I don't know what it's called yet, but uh, you know, I, I got to come up with one here in the next couple of weeks, I guess. And you and do you remember the genesis of that guy or that gal? Yeah, yeah. I found uh, I found the box in the middle. There's like a select, like there's like a produce box from this produce company that was pretty big around here, like in the '80s, like the '70s and '80s. So you'll go to a lot of garage sales or you know flea markets and stuff and people will have these old produce boxes there so i found the produce box and then um the thing on top actually i me and my girlfriend lila were on a trip and i had gotten a lead from a friend about a place out in indiana um, called the plaster shack which is was just an old just an old guy out there dug in had like a little pole barn operation going uh called the plaster shack and he uh he had been doing plaster he had been making molds and pouring plaster objects whether that be you know this one is like a wagon train wagon he had uh you know elves for the yard or plates for the wall and just i mean anything you can think of and this dude was out there the highway came in and was like, we're, we're going to put a highway through your building. So you got to figure it out. And he was old. He didn't have any money or whatever. And so they, they were closing. And I, my, the friend that tipped me off to it was like, you should go out here and get some stuff before they, where they shut down. And, and luckily enough, um, I was able to get a lot of really cool things, a lot of really great molds. And I, I love doing stuff like that. Like I, I love, uh, having, the echoes of other people and other people's lives in the work. So I try not to use many new things, I guess. I like things that are, have been in use, I guess. So yeah, so that thing came from that, some old wood on there. The There's a face in it. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there's like a face that's uh, in the, I guess you would say the background of it. And that's a, uh, that's a trace of this Carrie James Marshall painting that I really love. Um, one of his more famous paintings, but portrait of my former self. Um, I just love him as an artist and I'll, yeah, he's always just been such a genius to me. So that's like a, a trace of that painting, but just maybe in wood, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. So oh. it's been no, fun. I've had fun. Like that. Yeah. So that's, you could say that's kind of like what you're still currently currently working on i mean obviously like you said you've got other things in motion but that's that's the piece that you're sort of this painting yeah 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 this this painting i mean along with i don't know four or five others i guess that it kind of all is it's it's such a stream of work there's never really a time when it's like okay everything's done i'm gonna start fresh now it's like like everything kind of just 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 goes and goes and goes so which has i found to be the best way for me to work so yeah so uh switching gears just a little bit um you had a, you had a kind of an interesting quote out there from um that interview did you did with adsum where they asked you um who you would invite or who you'd want to have a beer with and um oh, yeah that was that was years ago well who did i say you said magellan Oh, sick. That's so cool. I bet he'd be such a jerk, though. I, 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 I can only imagine. Yeah, after I, I said that. I don't know. I was that was a long time ago. It's kind of a good answer for being 26 year old me. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I thought about that, too, after saying that. And I was like, man, he'd probably be a pretty terrible dinner guest, but he'd have some cool things to say, maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Funny. So if we were going to redo that and you're going to put together a dinner party, because I, I reckon that you probably uh, have a pretty decent hand at cooking. Um, Oddly enough, I, I don't, which is really funny. Really? I, yeah, Lila would wish it. Lila wishes I did. Lila definitely wishes I would cook some more food for her. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, maybe, you know, kind of embarrassing, you know, maybe embarrassingly, I just food is i love food i love hanging out with friends and eating dinner and stuff i've just maybe i've never been in a place in life where food was maybe i don't know it was just kind of it's never been like a sacred thing maybe in my family or just it was more just there i mean which is maybe a shame i mean a lot of my family does 
like my my grandma makes beautiful pies and i make casts and like make her pies so that, you know that that maybe is that there but it's yeah interesting i would love to get better at cooking food i guess you know so <laughs> that would it's be cool. it seems like you'd be really great at it because you're somebody that approaches all of these things with a certain amount of like you know there's there's obviously like a a, a, a way to like you said uh operate a certain kind of power tool and at the same time like i, I i'm sure that you kind of pick it up and i'm like all right you know what like this thing would probably be pretty pretty great yeah. going this this way use this way yeah, much much less dangerous, I guess, when you're making something than that approach to making a using a tool. Uh, yeah, I'm not very good at uh, directions. I'm not very good at like following that kind of stuff. So it'd probably be really good for me to have to follow a recipe and uh, do the whole thing, you know. So I, yeah, one day for sure, one day I'll, I'll get into it. Yeah, no, I'm 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 kind of excited to hear. Uh, um... <laughs> Yeah. or hear about your 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 forthcoming best-selling cookbook uh yeah, yeah. That, that hits the world out of the blue um but if you could invite uh as a follow-on to that if you yeah. could invite uh anyone i guess from the art world sport world literature space whatever you know who would who would make that invite who would make that invite roster for you uh man anybody ever anybody yeah. ever Including uh, our, including our homeboy Shell, Shell Silverstein. Man, it's funny. After we talked about him the other day, I, I I was looking into him a little bit, and I you know you know who he is, and he, he's obviously a beautiful poet, and those books grow up on those things, and um, I don't think it'd be him. No disrespect to Shell, but uh, <laughs> he seems like a cool <laughs> dude. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, maybe it's kind of a corny answer. Maybe maybe Ram Dass. I guess I think would be a pretty beautiful dinner. Uh, we might just sit there and not talk, but um, I think that would be pretty special. Um, yeah, it's yeah, interesting one. I guess if I, yeah, maybe artist wise, I'd love to have dinner with, I don't know, maybe it'd be hard, like a live. I think about like having dinner with Gober, like Robert Gober, and he's maybe my favorite living artist. And I just, you know, something I don't I don't know what the phrase is, but like you don't want to meet your idols or whatever. You know, you never want to meet your like heroes. It's uh, I think he would be a really awesome dude. So I, I just would never, you know, it would just be so crushing to if he wasn't awesome, which I I know that he is. You know, but uh, yeah. So maybe Gober, maybe Ramdas. Uh, yeah, yeah, funny. Yeah. Anybody from the sports world? Man, sports world. Who would I? Let's think. I uh, I know nothing about UFC or jujitsu or any of that stuff, but I've more recently kind of like tried to understand it in a way. Um, so I think maybe Khabib would be pretty cool. To, I think that dude seems. I know nothing about fighting or any of that stuff, but I think he seems like a pretty cool person in his uh maybe ethics or like just his way of approach of things i think is pretty cool he seems like a a really smart genuine guy which is is sick so if i had to say sports maybe that uh i don't know rodman be kind of crazy that dude's wild <laughs> i don't know i guess the dirt bike stuff man who would it be maybe kevin windham he'd be he seems like a nice guy <laughs> so yeah yeah no i mean uh it, it 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 definitely strikes me that um when i when i heard you say that i'm like wow you know like talk about talk about a, a, a great mental image especially like you know in light of what you talk about or you know kind of do in the sense of creating these worlds you know you 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 definitely just have an innate knack for for colliding these objects and colliding these certain kinds of um i think within every object like you said within every one that has its like its own identity its own shape and all that but it, it also evokes a certain uh emotion or feeling you know even when you when you see these kinds of things and and the and the colors that you pick and whatnot so thanks man that that means a lot yeah that's 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 the goal you know so so i can only imagine the uh the nominations of people that would 
you know, crack that, crack that invite list would be, yeah, uh, you know, to be honest, I don't think that there's many people that I just, I wouldn't have dinner with, you know, like, I, I don't think that there's, there's people that I would be like, no, like, I'm not gonna, you know, I, I think that it's just cool to talk and understand people, you know, I think is rad. Oh, Lila's here. What up? <laughs> What's up, Lila? Hey. She, she's back with our uh, water oh cantaloupe juices cantaloupe juice. so. there's like this really sketchy mexican restaurant like a block away and it's so good oh perfect good yeah. how good. are you i'm doing well how was your uh how was your trip to africa oh it was pretty incredible i mean it was very it was very stimulating <laughs> it's very stimulating that there was just so much i went to kenya and tanzania and i went on a safari so i went to six different uh national reserves and saw a bunch of wildlife and um before we went to any of the reserves we were in nairobi and nairobi's the capital of kenya and uh, we went into the slums and they're, they're partnered with an organization uh, called Amera Life or Americare, and they make a kind of just a sanctuary where there's a little library and uh, some clothes, and um, they're trying to provide education for the children of the slums, basically. So we went and visited the organization, and it was really heavy, honestly. It was really, I haven't been to too many third world countries. So uh, that was definitely the most involved I've ever been, I guess, or the most experience I've ever had in a third world country. And you also start to see that uh, China is basically colonizing Kenya right now. Um, they are financing a lot of the infrastructure there. And it's kind of a trip because what's going to happen and their plan is very obvious that their plan is just Kenya is getting so indebted to China that eventually they're just going to have to give them their port. And it's really scary. <laughs> like there's, it's really, it's, it's really, really, really kind of overwhelming because you just understand so much of what's going on there. And you're like, oh my God, like, what can I do? Like, I don't know what I, I literally am like, I, I don't know. I come back to America and I'm just kind of, my mind is still blown a bit, <laughs> but it was great. I think there's a lot of things uh, these days that are like that, where yeah. they're mind blowing. Um, they're so big. Um, like it, it's difficult to kind of understand where you could even kind of get in on it in a way that makes any level of an impact. Um, yeah, I just, what, what do I have to do with any of this? Like, what is my place? What is my purpose in any of this? Why am I seeing this? You know, I felt really, I got taken on this trip. It's like a very expensive trip that um, one of my oldest friends, his parents like took us on this trip together. And it was kind of, you know, talked about our whole lives that we'd go somewhere. We didn't know where, but that they'd take me on a trip with them. And I felt really lucky to go on this trip. You know, I felt so privileged to be able to go there. And it was much heavier than I could have ever expected. And I just was wondering what my place in all of that is. Like, you know, why am I seeing this? Like, why, why? I don't, you know, does, what do I do with all this information now? Like, what? <laughs> know what to do I'm like oh my god I come back and I'm like what do, what do I do like I don't know what to do but I, I uh I lived in Johannesburg South Africa for about six months back oh, wow. in 2003 okay. and uh yeah it was you know the world was uh obviously the world was a different place back then you know pre-Facebook pre-iPhone pre all that um but the the you know, immediately you're, you know, you're, you're just all too aware that you're out of that kind of bubble that we have here. Um, you know, there's a certain amount of reliability that we have here that, that, um, you know, that is still predictable enough, 
you know, I, I feel like we've seen over the last 12 months plus, we've seen a lot of things that maybe were predictable for a long time coming. Um, but there, there obviously was just a, like a lot of change less like 24 months, but at the same time, when, when I remember when I, like the first couple of weeks I was there, I was like, wow, you know, this is just such a remarkably different environment than, than you get used to whether you're in California or Ohio or New York or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. Yeah, it was, it was very, uh, productive. I felt like for me as a human I was like just understanding more and outside of myself and uh you know then having to like form some kind of opinion or like acceptance with all of that new information has kind of just been like <laughs> yeah good I think it's very healthy to experience these new things and try to find you know where you fit into all of it and what you can do with that information and it's cool I mean I it was it was I was so happy to get out of like to travel it felt so good to travel yeah so. yeah no I, I um I'll never forget this one day in particular where I was actually um uh kind of like taking a bit of a day off from the job that I had I I this 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 gentleman who's a geologist uh it's kind of a crazy story but like to back it up the former ceo of lamborghini stayed at a hotel like around the block and i met this and i met this guy vittorio de capua i'm uh i met this guy at a at a dinner spot because i used to be pretty decent at speaking italian so i was by myself and i started rapping out in italian and these guys were you know they were they were they were probably all too happy to have um somebody else in the mix that could, I don't know, kind of help re recruit a crew of sorts whenever we went out to like a bar or whatever, um, yeah. you know, and, but this one day, um, that this guy, the capital, he was in the country to help facilitate the sale. Um, speaking about business and stuff and international stuff, he was facilitating a sale of a granite company, um, in South Africa to a, a business that's in Italy. And so he said one day, he was like, hey, he's like, would you like to check out um, where we do all this kind of stuff? And I was like, yeah, that would be great. So like four in the morning, this geologist picks me up and uh, we like drove for hours on end uh, in the dark. And eventually the sun's coming up and it, you know, it's it's like a terrain I'd never seen before in my life. You know, it's like Africa, I guess maybe parts of Australia maybe look similar where it's just like wide open space, kind of, you know, very, very dry. And uh, um, he's like pointing out little spots along the way. He's like, yep, he's like, there's a lot of platinum under that ground right there. And that there's a lot of diamonds over there. And there's, you know, and we, en and we ended up at um, this granite quarry, which, you know, if you ever want to sort of envision a sort of crazy mankind, destroying mother earth environment it's a, it's a granite quarry yeah and that's not that's not to call out everybody who you know mines granite so shout out to the guys who work hard on the mines i mean it's 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 like you know like any kind of mining it's it's real work but you know you're seeing earth movers where the tires themselves are like 15 feet high and yeah. uh um i'll never forget uh the way that they pulled these slabs of granite from the, the from like this canyon that they basically create, they drilled these holes down and in, down and in, down and in, and then they like the holes eventually met up, and they mm. strung this rope that had like I never heard of such a thing before, but they had like low grade diamonds embedded wow. into the rope. Wow. wow and so once they fed that rubber rope through those holes that conjoined then they would like flip the switch on this machine and the diamonds would and the rope would move so fast through the rock that it would mm -hmm. cut it like absolutely as smooth as the as like the surface of a table wow, wow. and they lift these slabs out yeah. of the side of the earth drop them into this like field that sort of in, like eventually looks like a graveyard with massive headstones. 
And I'll never forget these dudes from the um, business in Italy, they would play this game where they'd walk around and compete as to how big of a diameter they could produce with their saliva when they spit on the rock. Because the way that some of this granite is viewed commercially is if you spit on it, it's similar to the color that it will have once you put a kind of like coating on it in Home Depot. Right. Whoa. Bizarre. It was bizarre. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. I mean, sorry for the long ramble, but, uh, oh, that's, yeah, that's far out. Uh, that's yeah, my grandma story. Crazy. Yeah. I think, you know, it's all, it's all happening all at the same time. It's fucking crazy. You know, one day there's just going to be a big hole there and somebody's going to look at it and be like, what did they do here? And then, if only you were alive, you'd know the knowledge of the diamond rope. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell them about the diamond rope and, and all of the great countertops that uh, went yeah. through Home Depot and are now in, in some suburban kitchen. For sure. One day that'll be just the most far out antiquity, you know, such antiquity to somebody. Be like, I mean, yeah, sure they, they used to spit on it. And you're like, what? And let, me tell, and let, let me tell you, uh, these guys, I assume... Somebody, they definitely were not self-taught at spitting. They, yeah. Somebody somebody gave them a, a bit of a blueprint as to the right technique. Yeah, that's generational spitting. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's passed down. That's my grandfather's grandfather was a spitter. <laughs> yeah, you know, they, they had the skills. They, they definitely had honed those skills. Um, <laughs> well, hey, look, uh, I uh, don't want to take away any more from the um, food that just arrived. Uh, no, Lila, no, no, it's no. all good. Lila, I, we were talking about food before you showed up. You were. I, I didn't know if you guys were still going to be going. I was like, oh, I'm just going to pop in there. I hope I'm not interrupting. No, I, I told him I, I thought it would be kind of funny if he did. But uh, yeah, Tyler was saying that he needs to, um, you know, start cooking a little bit more. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh my yeah, God, he, 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 he asked me how good of a cook. He said he thought I was a good cook. Dude, he could be. <laughs> with, the, with the amount of ingredients and things that are going just, into these I, paintings. Yeah, that's why I always say that. I'm always like, how? Like, you would make the craziest stuff. You would make amazing stuff, but he just, I don't know. You're just better at it. You're just no, a great cook. He just cook. likes when I cook. He just likes when I cook just... for him, which I understand. I would like people to cook for me do yeah you here, know? all right here all right here it is here we go here we yeah. go <laughs> it would be good i know it i'm like you'd be really good yeah i will i will one day promise. the world of uh americana fusion is is mm -hmm. eagerly awaiting your uh contribution yeah. to the culinary yeah. space for, for sure it one day one day oh my gosh for sure well yeah john i really would love to catch up with you too i have like so many questions but i don't want to just you know We'll, we'll talk another time, but. Um, it sounds good. Yeah, I really, I'm, I hope everything's going well for you in Boston. <laughs> Boston is, uh, Boston's a really pretty town. I mean, there's one thing that can be said about this place and that is that um, so many trees and green spaces that uh, um, are just like everywhere. You just kind of feel like getting out of the car and throwing a Frisbee around all the time. That's so, cool. That's a nice. Maybe we're, we're going to go visit my grandpa up in Cape Cod um, in September. Maybe we can stop through Boston on our way. We're driving. Yeah. That'd be great. I yeah. think I think you guys definitely should. It'd be a good good time. That would be really fun. It's not it's not super far. Yeah. 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 No, it's it's actually on the way uh, um, to the Cape. Uh, yeah. yeah, I need I need to I need to kind of head out that way. Where in Cape Cod does your uh, grandfather live? He's in uh, Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Back in the day, my uh, my family would occasionally head out to a place called Falmouth, mm. um, in the Cape. Oh, wow. And, wild place out there, man. Yeah, I I, I I'd never bit. been there until we went and visited it's her grandpa. Trip. It's a. It's a. Man, it's wild. It's crazy. It it just the, uh, it's it's heavy, dude. It's, I mean, at least for me personally, it was, it was a heavy deal. What about it? Did you find that it was so heavy? I, I, 
maybe just because I, I I'm into that kind of stuff and I, I I like like you said I like history and I like those things it's just to, to understand that you know hypothetically that is like where it's you know where we went you know where, where, like Plymouth, so Plymouth and like all that stuff and that that was kind of where the expansion or man of you know it's the where beginning the, the, the beginning end. the beginning of the manifest destiny stuff started you know it's, it's just heavy man it's just crazy you go to the pilgrim monument out there and it's just yeah it, it's 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 i don't there's know like there's provincetown too do you know about Provincetown? yeah provincetown is really beautiful though it's like old like little provincetown Vietnamese. that whole history is cool and like crazy how it's like kind of a sanctuary and safe space and it really does feel like a little vietnamese fishing village which is cool it's all like tight streets and stuff you know i need to get out there yeah no i um since being here i've uh done a, a trip to portsmouth new hampshire which is sort of interesting um i did a uh, trip to gloucester which um is like a little further north like kind of old school italian uh fishing town Mm -hmm. and um yeah a lot of these places to your point yeah no they they they're like it, it is a trip when you think about um i don't know how much has kind of transpired since since people started showing up around there you know like to your, to your point about all of the the amazon trucks just flying around nowadays everywhere <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i uh I think it's easy to look at it maybe from a cynical lens, but I think when you also uh, maybe just understand that it's it, you're it's all happening at the same, you know, it's it, it, there's nothing you can really do as far as it's all like a reaction and an action, and it just the world keeps going. Yeah, you know? and you just try your best to maybe put out uh, the best you that you can, and just be positive and you know so it's yeah i don't know i try not to look at it cynically i i try to look at it as we're just in the process of that thing and that thing is going to come to an end and something else will start so and that's just the way it works very well said <laughs> you know so <laughs> so <laughs> I, don't know, I mean it's just Buckle up. i think that's just what it is so. but it, it's just wild being there uh grounds that you know we went to Plymouth Rock and all that and I never been to that as ever really uh you hear about it and everything but uh surreal there's that cult out there that is called the singing oh god what's it called it's oh, a yeah, yeah. it's a yeah. very god I gotta find the name actually here it's like it's like a grandpa. it's like a like a Christian based organization uh so better known as a cult that uh is very well known for their their choirs and they have this beautiful campus out there on the cape and they have this really crazy if you're ever out there you should go look at they have a wild monument that's like built on the grounds and from what i understand they wanted to build it like three times as tall it's already like i don't know 150 feet tall or something um but it's this giant kind of obelisk shaped thing with a pretty ominous black angel on the top of it and it's I, I can only imagine how big it is up you know it look it's huge from the ground so i can only imagine it's it's pretty like roman in a way it's like you know it's it's it's, it's pretty bizarre looking um and would it just you, looked out into the ocean would you describe it as being megalithic yeah yeah i'd say i you know if if everything else I mean, I guess the angel would probably fall off, but it's it's a pretty bizarre thing. It, it's like when you when you read about that old stuff, or you you, uh, you know, when they find like a giant foot or something, and you know, they like dig up a giant, foot, you know. So it just looks, uh, to me at least, maybe because I'm looking at it the light, through the lens of liking that stuff, but that is what it looks like to me for sure. Right. And they're just they're really good at singing. So I guess you can go to the parade and they sing in the parade. Huh. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if I wonder if they have dinner parties. Singers. They have a they're singing. They're known for the singing. Yeah, they like they're study really... all these crazy. Yeah. I mean they're they're known for the singing. The singing's supposed to be like hypnotic because it's so beautiful. It's like Did you hear the singing? No. No. Unfortunately. I, mean, I would have loved knows, to hear yeah, it. If we would have, who knows what would have happened. Shit, we might not have come back, you know. Yeah, we right. Might. You could have been just fully indoctrinated into the 
Yeah, I don't know. I got a bit of baritone in that lineup, you know. Just get in there. Yeah, <laughs> right. Put me in the fold, I guess. Um, wow, well, well, look, Tyler, it was a, a blast uh, talking to you for, um, you know, another occasion. Um, yeah. Yeah, every single every single time it's a it's it's a it's a it's a great chat and lila uh been obviously a long time it, it was uh stoked to, to hear that you had such a transformative trip to africa i think it's pretty difficult to go there and not feel that way yeah i don't know if it's possible yeah man thank you so much uh would love to do it again whenever you want to do it it's awesome talking to you i appreciate all the kind words and i think we should yeah yep whenever and I'll, I'll 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 keep you posted if I find my way out to, uh, you know, your friend's gallery uh, at Bracket Creek, um, because yeah. I, like I said, I'm I'm headed out headed out to Big Fork for a wedding uh, at the end of this month. Yeah, you should go for sure. It'll be they'll they'll welcome you with open arms. So I'll be I'll be coming in drop uh, saying that I know I know Tyler. So hey, yeah, they're good people. So all right, man. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. No, you guys enjoy your Friday. Uh, yeah. And uh, talk soon. Okay, bye, John. See you. Okay, see you.